some of the greatest challenges we've had in kidney transplant is how to prevent rejection and how to uh, prolong the life of these transplanted organs. Um, we've, been, we've been lucky here at New York Presbyterian in that we have a core uh, transplant immunobiology laboratory that's really been at the forefront of developing some novel techniques, namely molecular techniques for diagnosing rejection. In fact, uh, we've developed a technique here uh, whereby we can look at the urine of our transplant patients and we've developed certain what we call biomarkers that can provide us an index of any potential rejection activity that may be occurring. This is a great advancement for two reasons. One, it provides the opportunity to follow our patients without the need for a biopsy, which is an invasive procedure with a needle to get a piece of tissue to look at under the microscope, which has traditionally been the gold standard in the way we've tried to diagnose rejection in the past. But now, we can just simply take a little cup full of urine and take it to the laboratory. And that is so much more convenient for our patients to do than being stuck by a needle. Um, but secondly, and I think even more importantly, what it allows us to do is it gives us information in what I call real time. Uh, because the test is more easily done and more easily accessible to our patients, it's allowed us to um, kind of really fashion our immune therapy and individualize it to the patient for the first time um, um, uh, in the history of transplantation. And that's been important to us because it's allowed us to practice what I call uh, minimized immune therapy. Our patients don't tend to be on as much uh, medications as patients transplanted at other centers. We tend to get people off steroids, uh, really, before they leave the hospital and keep them off of it. And anyone that knows about transplantation knows that steroids is something that has always been a problem long term in transplant patients because it's really contributed to the physical disfigurement that people hear about in transplant from the medic medications. And it's also increased their risk of heart disease uh, long term. And we've been fortunate enough now to develop a program where most of our patients are off steroids almost immediately after the transplant and no longer have to see it uh, lifelong. Um, and it's really been because of the development of these very specific and novel uh, molecular tests that have allowed us to practice in this way and allowed us to enter this era of individualized immune therapy for the first time.